Oil prices hit 2016 highs today, rising another 3 percent. But now that sanctions against Iran have been lifted, there's some concern that all the crude coming back online could potentially pressure prices once again. Michelle Caruso Cabrera is on the island of Karg with a rare look at the inner workings of Iran's oil industry. This place is Iran's cash machine. It's the island of Karg, 25 miles off the coast, dedicated solely to shipping oil. 90% of Iran's crude exports leave from here. CNBC was given rare access to the island as the country prepares for increased exports now that nuclear sanctions have been lifted. These tanks have the capacity to store up to 28 million barrels of crude at any one time. But they also serve as a political billboard. Oil and geopolitics go hand in hand. And that's on full display here at this Iranian export facility. Take a look behind me. Persian Gulf, written in English in very large letters on this storage tank. Why? The export manager here tells me every single time a tanker pulls in, he wants them to know that they are in the Persian Gulf. The name of this body of water is disputed by Saudi Arabia. They call it the Arabian Gulf, while the rest of the world calls it the Persian Gulf. This is what the tankers are here for. Slick black crude. Am I allowed to touch it? The head of exports for the National Iranian Oil Company, Golam Hussein Garami, opened the spout for us. What's the API on this? And then took us out to sea on a tugboat. This is where all the international oil tankers pull up so they can fill up with Iranian crude. The Iranians are hoping now with the lifting of the nuclear sanctions, they're going to be filling up a heck of a lot more of those tankers than they have for years. Before the toughest of the sanctions were imposed by the West, Iran was exporting more than 2 million barrels a day of crude and other petroleum products. The sanctions pushed them to as low as 700,000. The workers here insist the sanctions were never a problem, instead calling them an opportunity because it forced the Iranians to learn how to make their own replacement parts. For example, this turbine meter from Smith Systems of Corpus Christi, Texas, the Iranians say it was installed in 1984. Once American companies were prohibited from doing business with Iran, they could no longer get the replacement parts. So Iranian engineers manufactured them themselves. On the walls in this room, photos of the severe damage suffered in Karg from bombs during the Iran-Iraq war in the 1980s. Outside, a tribute to the first Karg victim of that war, side by side with the former and current leaders of the country. Ayatollahs Khomeini and Khamenei, the first and second Muslim clerics to rule over Iran since the Islamic Revolution in 1979. Yet another reminder that politics and oil are deeply intertwined. For Nightly Business Report, Michelle Caruso Cabrera, Karg, Iran.